Oh. Well, I, th I think I'm going to attack the uh, indigenous knowledge versus uh, contemporary science uh, situation here. So it's a potential uh, pot stirrer, but what's a conference without a little pot stirring? Um, basically, I think indigenous <laughs> knowledge uh, in, the, in the environmental space is um, taken too literally. It's over-romanticized. Okay, here comes the pot. It's over-romanticized. Our people didn't literally uh, go hug trees and sing to the grass and kiss sharks or whatever. Yeah. No, that is not the intrinsic relationship that our people have with the environment. It's a whole lot deeper than that. If we look at uh, uh, marine protected areas conservation, we'll look at contemporary methods of marine protection, uh, protected areas and uh, indigenous conservation. The, the comparison isn't isn't important in that they both uh, that they both achieve conservation. The comparison is that what why are they established? Why are they there? Okay. When we look at marine protected areas in a contemporary uh, science space, they look at the environment and we can tell by scientific data that our resources require uh, biodiversity and an ecological balance. Therefore, let's conserve this place. Let's conserve the well-being of this environment. In the indigenous space, here comes the pot again. It wasn't about the well-being of the fish, of the resources. Conservation in an indigenous space is a byproduct of something much deeper. The drive that, that achieves that conservation is survival. Okay? Conservation is a byproduct of the need to survive. What do I mean by that? I mean that if I don't conserve th these marine resources, I don't eat, my family doesn't eat, my village doesn't eat. We die. Now, I don't know about you, but that, that's a strong enough impetus, enough drive for me or our people to want to pay attention to these resources, this ecological environment. That is why conservation exists in the indigenous space. And this information is passed over generations, right? So if, if we look at across a generational spectrum, unimportant information does not pass down family lines. If it doesn't serve you, if it doesn't serve your family, you don't pass that information down. However, if it serves you and your family and your village because it provides sustenance and cultural security, you naturally will pass that down through the generations. You pass it down your family. Now, if we have many families across many generations, over time, that information is going to be tested, refined, and accurate. This is indigenous, indigenous people's intrinsic relationship with the environment. This is real stuff. This is why indigenous knowledge needs to be taken seriously in the Western contemporary space. No fairies, no unicorns, no magic. Well, I might describe it as magic. magical because uh, <laughs> it's freaking incredible, that's why. A little bit of magic. We have this incredible information over generations of generations of yep. information passing down. The challenge is we need, we need the indigenous knowledge, but we also need contemporary science. We need them to work together. No more verses. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> That's what's called a 